Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem, and today we're going to be painting up the Palantine Subjugator Patrol for Necromunda. Right then, we're going to get straight into this. The whole models have been sprayed up with Mechanicus Standard Grey as a base and then we've actually just put Dark Reaper, I'm uh, applying Dark Reaper through an airbrush all over the model. I'm not really, try and avoid the weapons if you can um, but I'm basically just painting Dark Reaper over the entirety of the model. You can use a brush, don't worry about it, you don't have to have an airbrush for a lot of what I do in this. And uh, you don't forget as well that you also need to do the shield. As you can see, the shields are off on these figures, making them a hell of a lot easier to paint. Once your Dark Reaper has dried, we're going to be getting on to the dry brushing. Now, I'm using a large dry brush, and I've got the paint Russ Grey. I'm going to dry brush the entirety of the model with this paint. This is going to give us a great base to basically go off on. Yeah, we are going to be putting an ink wash over the top. This is going to set it up nicely. Next, I want you to coat the model entirely with Dragonoff Nightshade. I know English sometimes, I'm hoping. Uh, <laughs> and basically, this is going to give you a nice, kind of like a, a mid 90 grey that we're going to be going off on. Uh, but just make sure before you go on to the next stage that this is completely dry. To give it an hour or two, have a cup of tea, have a biscuit, uh, watch a program maybe on your phone. Once that's completely dry, we're going to go back to rust grey. Not as heavy maybe as a dry brush as I did before, but just mainly an up and down motion just to catch the edges. Uh, and that will allow us basically just to sort of redefine the highlights again on the armour. Again, it's all fast and quick, um, so get cracking with all six. Next step is to, using Rhinox Hide, uh, cover up all of the pouches and all of the buckles, any straps that you want to touch the paint in. Just basically paint those over with the Rhinox. Now you probably will need two thin coats of the Rhinox. As you can see from the background, I'm actually doing it from a wet palette. I tend to use a wet palette because it keeps my paint nice and thin and doesn't allow it to dry out like it can do on a dry palette. Uh, I'm not using a blending technique for this, this is just so that I can make sure that the little dollop of paint that I'm using is actually going to be using all the way through. Yes, the pot is a bit different in the background, it's because Rhinox size is identical to what used to be, I believe it's called Bestial Brown, or it might be, yeah, Scorch Brown, there we go, and that's what I'm currently using. Once your two thin layers of Scorch Brown or Rhinox Hide has dried, we're then going to be doing a touch of edge highlighting using Mournfang. Now, I have watered down the Mournfang just a little bit more than normal, uh, and this is so that when I apply the first coat and then I apply the second coat, we're going to get a nice transition from the Rhinox Hide onto the Mournfang highlight. Once that's dry, I'm going to coat all of the leather areas using a small basing brush with Agrax Earthshade Gloss. I'm not using the normal Agrax Earthshade, although you can if you want to. I'm using the gloss version, uh, simply because I believe that when it's dried, this gives a better effect upon the leather pieces. Now we're going to go on to the yellow, but apologies, I'd already painted the yellow with Avalon Sunset and for some reason it didn't record right. So this section here is me highlighting or going over the Avalon, Sun, uh, the Avalon Sunset with Uriel Yellow. So use Avalon, a couple of coats of Avalon to start with. Uh, it can be quite a nice thickish paint, so sometimes you only need one or two. But as you can see, I'm trying to follow natural light patterns with the Uriel Yellow, so mainly going for the top areas rather than the ones at the bottom. And I've thinned it down to make sure that it gives it a nice little pattern. And then once you've done your first set, go back through, maybe do a second or even a third, depending on how strong you want in this colour. We are going to be edge highlighting this though, so don't forget there's going to be another stage. So time for some edge highlighting. This is Flash Gets Yellow. And I'm basically just applying this to the edges of the yellow, uh, just mainly around the corners, just to make it pop and stand out just a little bit more. 
when it comes to the centric circles in the chest and on the shields, I try and avoid just a bit of an edge and maybe just make it look like what it, you sometimes see on comic books or on cartoons. Um, I don't really like painting circles inside things. It can be a bit annoying, as you can see. I've just tried to go down the side. That way, by doing that, I'm just creating it, just catching the edge of the actual raised circle rather than anything else. So now I'm going to paint the glass on the shields and on the model's visors. I'm going to start off by using Cantor Blue. This is going to give us a really good base uh, for the models going forward. This is followed up with Colador Sky. Now what I'm trying to do really is just to do it in lines, uh, mainly focusing main towards the top. Uh, and I'm just trying to put lines across the actual visors and the glass, not to make it too much of a blocking session. Uh, I've also thinned it down a little bit, so if you need to come back and do a couple more, just to try and give it that nice little reflective look, you can. This is going to be followed by a highlight of Teclas Blue. Now, I kind of concentrated the Teclas towards my right, the model's left-hand side, uh, and just did little, maybe edge highlighting every now and again. I tried not to have too much going over way, because it's kind of like just looking like it's reflecting the sky. I'm saying sky. <laughs> There's no sky in Necromunda, but reflecting any light source from one particular side. And I finish that off by just adding a little tiny bit of white scar, just over some of the more uh, brighter blues, just to finish them off. So next up, I'm painting the eyes. Well, eyes, I'm saying the visor eyes. We use Grace here to initially put the base down using a very thin brush. Make sure it's nice and watered down. Next up, weapons. Uh, just using the standard Games Workshop lead belcher here. Pin it down a little bit. Make sure that you've got a small enough brush so you can have some control. Uh, but just make sure that you give the weapons themselves a good liberal coat of this metallic colour. Also, uh, make sure that you paint any of the uh, handles for the weapons and paint any of the grenades. Paint all the grenades, including the ones that's incorporated within the actual backpacks as well. Paint them up with silver. And I'm trying to figure what else needs painted up with silver. Oh, the buckles. Yes, the buckles are on the actual pouches as well. Make sure they've been given a coat. Sorry about only being showing, me, showing my hand. Now, apologies about this. Uh, a little bit of a file missing. I did actually coat all of the silver, apart from the ones on the buckles, with uh, some, le uh, some known oil. And now what we're going to be doing is using some of the Black Templar Contrast Paint. We're going to be painting the cloth. So that's actually going to give it a nice darker feel. Some of the blue will still stick through. But it gives it a really, really good sort of dark cloth look. And we're also going to be using some of the Black Templar for some of the gun casings. Which will give it a nice black metallic feel. So it's up to you what part of the gun casing you want it to actually don't have done black. Um, and there will be some photos at the end just to try and give you guys some reference if you want. But I just tended to sort of pick like casing around but not the handle, not the main... Um, Shaft area, shaft area, hey, the bit that shoots the bullet out of, mm, yes, technical with guns there. Next up, uh, some contrast paint orc flesh. This is where I paint all the grenades except the ones that I'm going to be doing on the chest. I'm actually going to do them Telesar blue, um, but I'm painting majority of the grenades with this colour. I'm also, as well, um, painting the eyes, um, so they're actually going to be painted up with the orc flesh to give them some green lenses. And finally, I dirtied up some of the shields by doing the usual lead belt shit with sponge technique. Uh, basically, just some old sponge, dabbed it off with a little bit of lead belt shit, and dabbed it around the edges, focusing more toward the bottom, where some maybe scrapes uh, and uh, chipping has actually occurred due to the course of combat. And there you have it. Paint the base however you feel. Um, I also did miss a step by I did put some transfers on before putting on the uh, silver damages, uh, mainly so that you could have a bit of the chipping effect go on to where the silver area is. I also did a little bit of um, blue sort of highlights in some of the weapons using my airbrush. 
that I've already got a video of uh, showing people how to do that to be honest with you so there's not really much point in just reiterating everything here you can always have a look back through uh, hopefully I'll try and tag it but sometimes I forget so if not just have a look back through the playlist um, and then of course you should be able to come on to there well thank you very much for watching guys please like share subscribe hit that notification button if you do want to see more stay safe during all this COVID-19 lunacy um, I did come across a news article the other day about one woman complaining, especially in England, that she had driven an hour and a half to go to the beach and then was complaining that other people had also driven an hour and a half to go to the beach. Did you think, I'm not quite sure if she thought she was going to be on her own? Mm, I don't know, I mean that's, uh, that's definitely, I think her surname or first name should be at least Karen on that one. Well thanks very much for watching guys, um, we'll see you next time.